Wow. We have suffered a great loss as of Monday of this week. Yeah. Esteemed development studio led by God King game design genius Cliffy B. Mm -hmm. Dude huge. Hugest of dudes. Mr. Another One. We were going to ride his biceps to another billion dollar franchise and... But those goddamn His strength faltered. Those goddamn Overwatch anime nerds you just know, didn't understand his genius. I mean, it has cursing. It has explosions, blood. You can guts. play it on a PC only because that's what hard. Also, oh, but not Xbox because those guys are fucking worse. They're salty. Than fucking Overwatch. Very nerds. salty nerds. So salty. Kind of salty, huh? Yeah. But you know who's salty today? Cliff Blazinski. So wherever you are, sleep, sleep tight, sweet prince, sick boy, and, and, and may a, a a a cavalry of of cheap knockoff games sing thee to thy rest. Thy will be done. The calabaza, calabaza, todo mundo va la casa. I. Couldn't have put it better myself <laughs> if I tried. I'm and really trust upset. me, I would have to I'm try. I'm really upset. First of all, Chrono black screened, so he didn't see the fucking intro. Gwen just got here. That was fantastic. Who was it for? Who who and for what? Well, guess what? Now you have incentive to check out the YouTube channel. You do. There you go. Absolutely. That and was... all of our audio listeners who may have just opened the podcast and then tabbed off... Or wondering now you have to rewind it. Wondering why? Oh, it's episode nine. Why are they playing FF seven music? Why don't you go check out the fucking YouTube video, you piece uh, of shit? Well, oh uh, man, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Because guess what? Cliff Cliff Blazinski is completely fine. But you know who's not? <laughs> about sixty something odd 60 people. Sixty something odd people. That was some shit, man. Hey, welcome to another episode of Not Another Podcast, episode 9. Episode it's also the return of myself, because I think I only streamed once this entire week. I only did the same. Hey. So this is, bi this is the comeback stream. We're in the same place Same again. time. And we got some good news. Yes. We got some cool stuff coming not down the pipeline. Not Cliffy Blazinski related. No, news. not at all. Um, N uh, Mr. Max has some really cool stuff he's going to be doing. I'm going to be... Around, <laughs> you'll be there for it. <laughs> I just want to say big bonus points if I, to whoever can tell me what this is actually from our our layout for this week. Well, by the, the end of the stream. Well, the problem is you say that, but I have a story related to just that very thing right now. Ooh, okay. But it's not like anything big. But yeah. You know. All right. Well, little stories. You know, those are the ones that. Yeah. Like you, you never, impact. you never know who you're talking to, right? You know what I mean. Like I was at work. Like I'm driving. I'm about to get in my car to go to work. And we have two people who work with us, mm -hmm. um, two gentlemen from Mexico, and one of them has always come up to me, well, and it's not their real names. So Chuck and Sabrina. Um, so so Chuck, wait, wait, you just made up names? No, that's their nicknames. So that's not their real. Oh, names. okay. I was gonna um, say because. <laughs> it's like one could be Sabrina and no, the other one is Chaka. Sabrina and Chaka. Okay. So they're coming up to me. They're asking me what I'm doing for my weekend, and Chaka's speaking me in Spanish. And he's like, "Oh, so you play video games?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And you know, I'm ready for the casual. Like, yeah, I play Call of Duty. I've had a battlefield. Then fucking Sabrina comes up to me and goes, "Hey, do you know about King of Fighters?" And I'm like, "What?" He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like Keo, Rugal, and Iori. And I'm like, oh, that's shit, a, he that's plays. A team. That's a team, Oh, you shit, know? he plays. Like, that's, that's like the first thing East I'm thinking, Cannon team, but it's cool. Yeah, and he's like, I have the collection on PS2 at home, 94 to 2002. I'm like, holy shit, you fucking play. Like, I didn't I didn't know. Oh, I, was, man. I looked at him. I was like, I was like, oh, okay. He probably, like, has, like. A fucking like he picked up fourteen or something, and he's kind of like for his kid. And like, no, no, he, he's he grew up on that shit. I was like, oh. wow, weird. Like this dude who's always cheating on his wife, going to a local fucking <laughs> poor. <laughs> that explains why he was short hopping into his car. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> super dream cancel. That's why he was he was Neo Infinity Climax canceling <laughs> <laughs> in his car. Oh man. Um, Apparently. man. Oh man. Hey, you know. Small, small world. Small world. Everyone's, cool you know, world. We're getting to that point. We're reaching that singularity where I think everyone just kind of knows about everything yeah. now. It's Trump's going to turn around and say, start talking about his favorite cross tag tech characters. Oh, tonight. man. It's weird. It's like I would have the most to say about cross tag this week, especially, but I actually have the least to talk about. Why is that? In terms of just stuff I've played. Yeah, you know what? Listen to. I haven't really played a whole lot myself. I think we, you know, I, I finally beat. You know, I've been doing the whole God of War playthrough again. Mm -hmm. That's that's about it. Um, played a little bit more Monster Hunter. Uh, oh, 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 right. I guess who who wants to go first? Well, I mean, you. Oh, fuck it. You've, you've taken yeah, the lead. Taken go the ahead. Lead. And I think the the biggest game. I don't need to be over here anymore. Oh no, you don't. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm done on. with trying to hide it too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a trip every time from my computer to my couch. Yeah. Bam. Bammo. Fuck it. So, um, the the one game I have played that is um, actually kind of substantial is something called Death Garden. Okay, uh, so you did get some yeah, time in with Death Garden. I, I did. I finally did. I, I, I got some time in around Thursday. And I want to say, let me go ahead and start pulling them up right now as I'm talking. Okay. Uh, so, Death Garden is, uh, and everybody hears the word... And they immediately go, uh, gross. But I'm kind of down with it. And the idea is it's a uh, asymmetrical sh running game, kind of. Okay. So there's a hunter and there's runners. And it's kind of set like a future, future cyberpunk Hunger Games kind of style. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's got the Absolver mask on the runner side. And the hunter's just some big kitted out fucking cyberpunk space marine. And um, I was I was actually wrong. Um, it is created by the Dead by Daylight. I, I originally thought it was created by the um, the guys who did what's that fucking zombie game? Dying Light. Die. Yeah. 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 Because apparently I got confused with the the, the light. Okay. Thing. So Dying Light was the one with the parkour. Mm -hmm. It was first person shooter. Dead by Daylight. Is the the horror game that's kind of the same thing? Yeah, okay, it's it's the same, it's sort of the same thing, but it's like in this one, movement and uh, <clears throat> more, I guess, more team play is emphasized a little bit. Alrighty. And I had I had some fun with it. I definitely thought it was pretty cool. Um, asymmetrical games when they turn around and they tell you asymmetrical as fuck, uh, they they really mean it. The hunter is kitted the fuck out. He has a lot of power. Um, almost an insane amount, and you cannot damage the hunter at any mm -hmm. interval. But he can, you know... And the other thing is, too, is that it's not like he, he is um, super incapable of movement, either. In fact, his... Uh, let's see if I can slow down a little bit. So you got, obviously, two sides, and the, and the, 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 the core crux of it is that there's three objectives on the map. Mm -hmm. And you have to... Go to these pylons that are on the map and sit on it for a certain amount of time and fill it up until it finally fills to its full gauge, at which point you open like one lock on the exit door. So when you do that and you get you got to do two out of three, and then when you finally do that, runners have to make it to the exit to win. Hunters have to stop them at any point. Hunters can't outright kill you, though. They can down you, but they can't outright kill you. The only way you can die is if either A, you bleed out, or B... Um, you get sent to what is called a blood post, which is very similar to, to their Dead by Daylight mechanic, where you just you pick them up and you throw them on like a sacrificial kind of altar thing, and like it has its own little time meter that fills up, mm -hmm. and when it finally fills up to full and it brings you up, um, if the hunter gets over and after like a short amount of time of him interacting with it turns it on, he kills you. Okay. Um, so uh, at that point, runners essentially what they have to do is a do the objectives where if you're on the objective, it shows you exact. It shows the hunter exactly where you are at all times. But if you fuck off, like you, it, you, you get that be you get to be invisible again, kind of not right. invisible, but visibility is not as good for the hunter. You're not a shining blip on yeah. the mini map. Yeah, well, not mini map. It's just straight up on your vision. Like oh, you see him an outline, of like an like outline. Them. Oh, okay. It's like so a predator vision. Yeah, exactly. And it's um, it's fine. 
I was expecting. I don't know why I was expecting more. Probably because I saw Dying Light instead of Day, Dead by Daylight. Yeah, you were like, oh, cool, crazy parkour shit with like. Yeah, anything that says, uh, you know, movement, parkour, uh, multiplayer. I'm in. I'm down. Yeah. I'm all about it. Yeah, and... Brink's free, you know, now. <laughs> you, you don't even have to pay for it anymore. Uh, you know, I try so hard to run away from Brink, and it's like, I, I booted up, for whatever, just out of curiosity, I booted up fucking Swagalag, and then I, I, I saw, right behind me, I had the fucking, the GameStop little midnight to close, it was a Brink-esque fucking thing just hanging there behind me oh that... that's right you guys started doing fucking webcams i forgot about that yeah, yeah, yeah we did um i can't remember that fucking game it's okay i uh, there definitely is a game that's gonna have a lot of progression to it the the actual when you have runners you know what they're doing it's really fun for clarification we are no longer talking about brink starting now yeah <laughs> <laughs> really funny um uh. fucking because the idea is you have three classes as a runner. You have the controller, the tormentor, and the support. Supports are obvious. Like, you can shield them, you can heal them. And, uh, and you level things up after picking up upgrade points on the map. Okay. You can res people from far away if at, a, at like, a certain level. Mm -hmm. uh, tormentors are... They, they keep track of the hunter, and they're constantly, like, stopping the hunter from doing stuff. Like, the tormentor has an ability to where he can shoot something at him and, and make it so everything he interacts with slows down. So like the little bar that fills up. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's slowing him down. So basically what you can do is you can stop him from killing the person and then a, and then a controller can come over and the controller is like oh, the only really confrontational person. He can stun him, uh, knock him back a little bit. So if he's trying to, you're trying to save somebody, you can actually knock him back and have his old screen f uh, flip out. Mm -hmm. Or you can slow him down. And then just kind of run away from him as fast as possible. Uh, only problem is, if you have even the slightest bit of aim right now, um, you might as well just call it a win. Because that game is nuts easy for hunters that have the, the slightest bit, the slightest modicum of, like, fucking shooter abilities. Like, hunters really, uh, runners really have to fucking pull out yeah. every single, like, you have to work together. And the problem is, is that I don't know if, voice chat is apparently in the game. But the but the fucking button for it, no one knows what it was. Can't rebind it. No, it wasn't in the fucking options. Like because it kept saying comms comms action, and it was like, oh hey I need and it's just like a little fucking macro. Hey I need health. Hey I need this. Oh, there was no I I didn't see any button. I must I if I if there was I'm dumb. But I did not see anything. Yeah, that game seems like it it necessitates you like, need good team play work and yeah. That's great for people that you play together with. Um, as a person who casually plays competitive online games all the time. No. no big nopes. Big nopes. Oof. Hunters are fun. It's a, it's all right. I wish it was more. I wish yeah. there was. You know, it's alpha. We'll see what happens. That's about it. Let's I mean, see if it sticks to landing. I think it will. It, Dead by Daylight seemed to have been pretty well received. Yeah. I didn't see it. But you know, it's a game I'm for a, a certain kind of person. person. So <laughs> <laughs> let me play cross tag. We did play cross tag. What oh. did you think about cross tag? I, I love cross tag. You do? I do. All right, I well. cross tag. So I say it a lot when it comes to fighting games. Um, we're in like, oh, I have I have so much fun with this game. I'm gonna learn this game. I think cross tag is the only one that I sat there and I, I was like. My my biggest thing is like I can't get over the button mashing, mm -hmm. and that game and what it did for taking away execution and putting it in the like, in the hands of someone who, like me who's a big old baby boy, who who just can't figure out, d no, excuse me knows what a DP is knows what a quarter circle is knows what a fucking pretzel motion is can't ever figure those out can't ever figure out combo links or anything like that, mm -hmm. and the fact that like they had essentially what is a, what is effectively a two button fighter, with like two other buttons that do kind of fighty things yeah overhead um, and sweep and your overhead tag and, and, and it's still raw switch mm -hmm. and it's still a really complex game that if you know what you're doing you're going to beat the shit out of somebody regardless uh first time in a game that i was sitting there and i you know i didn't just button mash when we fought mm -hmm. i like thought about what the combo did where it was going to link towards and it was it, i it did what rising thunder attempted to do just well 
Yeah. So this game won't die on impact. Yeah, exactly. It will uh, die shortly afterwards. A lot of a lot of really fun characters. A lot of really fun dynamics going on. I I'd love to. Pick, I'm gonna pick that game up as soon as possible when it comes out. Well, I I'll add in what I've played with Cross Tag because I get, I don't really have much more to say about it. Right. People, it's in people's hands. I'm really happy. Everyone seems to be liking it. I'm loving it. I'm just now starting in to get. It's just starting to get into like cross combos and that whole system. Yeah. Where yeah. you call your partner out, and then if you hit switch and tag at the same time, they'll just fucking stay out and the bar will start to drain. And so while you're doing combos, you keep hitting the assist in a direction. And then at any time you hit switch and it'll swap the characters, then you start using that character's assists. And like, it's fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And like, I probably put in around like two hours a day at least. Now, just going in, doing what little practice mode it has. That's my one gripe with this demo, is there's no practice mode. But you can set one of the characters to heal themselves, turn the timer on infinite, and kind of make it work. But, no, I'm absolutely loving the game. 100%. Down with it. Yeah. Down with it, man. In terms of what I have been watching, uh, nothing. I need to get back into that gold box. Yeah, I, that's I'm two episodes I'm behind. Change now. the password. You're three episodes behind. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, so I've been kind of listening to um, a lot of artsy music. It's 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 opened up my eyes to a couple of really cool artists. Um, one of them is Tokyo Wanderer, mm -hmm. amazing artist. Ha the first song that I heard from him was Heartbreak, and it is essentially. Um, it, anyone who has even the slightest bit of knowledge about like SMT, once you listen to it, okay. it sounds like an SMT city theme song, and it's like really good. And the first thing I thought to myself was, I want an SMT or Persona game that uses a Future Funk soundtrack. I want it. Well, it seems like the next logical progression, seeing how they just did like acid jazz, and yeah, yeah. And more kind of. I don't even know what to call Persona 4. Like, what genre of music that would be. Because Persona 3 definitely has more of a bluesies vibe. What? J-pop. Kind of, but it's still very jazzy. Yeah, but, like, it's it's more rock-centric, more pop-centric. I would just yeah, say it's pop. More, it's more pop. Yeah, I'd just call it pop. Yeah. It would just like, be pop in general. It, it would be... Persona 3 is rap. Persona 3 is rap and blues. Rap and sure. blues and Persona Four is pop rock. Five is, is Five. Jazz, jazz and jazz, yeah, just straight jazz and and then six can be It'll be future funk, future funk, electro. In the future, I'm down with it. Like I said, like I think we talked about it a while ago. I want a fucking Persona game set in the '80s. I was about to say it'd be really cool if we got like a a futuristic SMT game where like. It's like the 80s idea of the future. Oh like my the god, that's my future. favorite fucking Yeah, kind. guess what game just came out? It's a Strange Journey Redux. Oh yeah. It's like that. Yeah, except it's on a fucking console I don't want to It's use. on the 3DS, and it yeah. was not marketed properly. Not at all. Well, not marketed properly in general, but like if it's you It's not follow, marketed at all. If, well, if you follow like any Atlas things, they were kind of pushing it. Yeah, they were kind of pushing it. It's it's just you go to their YouTube channel. It's like they're showing way more love for Dragon's Crown right now, which is great. Dragon Dragon's Crown looks great, Dragon's but Crown. Strange Journey. I'd really love Dragon's gets Crown. Swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. But being broke as I am, yeah, I don't I'm just figuring I gotta fucking save money for the apocalypse next week. Oh Jesus! I think Friday. I'm finally gonna do it. I'm gonna trade in Dragon Ball, and we'll put it towards that. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm finally ready to let go. Oof. That's a lot. No, I can't. Never mind. No, you, no I you, can't. You definitely can't now. Hold on. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, you definitely can't now. I was so ready. Uh, and then finally, just more Shit. Camellia. I think I talked about Camellia before. Japanese. Uh, yeah. I just realized he came, he, she, whatever they are, came out with an album in March. Oh, and cool. it's hard as fuck. It's good. Dope shit. Overcomplexification is a dope song. That is just basically fucking 200 BPM dubstep. All right. And it's crazy. I'm, Fuck. I'm, I'm getting into that, like, those really high beats per minute songs because mm -hmm. I've been playing a lot of 
playing a lot of rhythm games. Oh, so yeah, no, OC people love Camellia. Yeah, it would make sense. I've probably played a few of his songs. Probably, or their honestly. songs. I, what, what, I think I actually one song I showed you. You said, "Oh, this is Osu." I was like, "Yeah, kind of, I guess." Yeah. All right. Bullshit. Weeb. Fucking idiot. <laughs> That's uh, it for me. Hey, it? Max, tell us about your... Uh, I've been playing cross-tag battle. You've already heard about that. Uh, I've been playing... been playing a good amount of Osu, actually. Just That's kind of my go-to game now, where it's like, I got some time to kill. I'll turn that on, play a couple songs. I've been playing mostly Osu Mania, which is closer to DJ Max. Mm -hmm. It's actually exactly DJ Max, but with a wider song library. Yeah. Um... Still having a lot of fun with that. Probably devoting more time to that that I should be do devoting to fighting games, especially now. But again, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, as far as what I'm watching, there there have been there is, have been mix ups. There have been change ups in the in the 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 seasonal anime viewing list. Okay, the horse is gone. Good. I haven't the t that time I mentioned it on the podcast like three podcasts ago. This is the last time I watched it. Good. So it's gone. Drop it. That's like gone. a bad habit. Uh, but I picked up two more shows. Mm. Which were... Uh, Just you know, as equally horsey or... Uh, no. No horses yet. Okay. Actually, as of right now. Good. Uh, one of them is, is kind... It's kind of Moe trash. Mm. It, it's called Comic Girls. And it's about four high school mangaka... Who all live in a dorm and they draw manga and it's just this cute series and all the girls they got little funny personalities and it's the show that's like yeah this is like this is like the empty carbs of anime <laughs> it's like i'm not getting any real value out of it but it's just kind of a cute show and the characters have little funny quirks uh a show that is actually fantastic and actually competes with Megalobox for show of the season for me personally. Really? Uh Hina Matsuri is a really good one. It's about a, a girl with psychic powers who just one day drops from this Yakuza guy's ceiling, lands right on his fucking head, and the show is just a upbeat, lighthearted comedy that has some really like touching moments about like family and shit like that. But she's a psychic. Yeah, but it, it it starts where it's like, oh shit, like she could fuck up everything. She could destroy the world. But then as it goes on, the psychic stuff like uh, so didn't even really need to be a part of it now because they've adapted so well to their environments and it's kind of shows how they've changed each other. Okay. Uh it's it's it's, it's a comedy. It's not as laugh out loud funny as other people have said. It's a, just a lot more touching, I'd say. It's a very nice watch. But it's very good, very well written, and the supporting cast is great. Um, oh. And it's got kind of that uh, ra 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 feel, where there's such a big cast where some episodes will just focus on side characters. And you're like, all right, cool. Get to learn more about th this guy. And it's great. I, I have tried to watch ra 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 like three times now. And I, find, I think what it is is that any time I'm just like... Yeah, all right. I'll try it out. It's always like at 12 at night when I'm already tired and it's already on fucking TV. And I just look and I'm like, -ra -ra -ra, and I just fucking pass out yeah, every single time. You try to say time. the name and you're like, ah, oh, this is too much work. Yeah, my brain. I will, uh, real quick, I will do want to add some shade uh, to, to my previous playing game segments. I have made the leap from Overwatch to back to CSGO. Cool. Because I fucking is hate. Is that cool? Cool for me. I'm enjoying my time with CSGO right. way more. Hey, if more. you're enjoying it, that's great. Fucking Overwatch has been like awful this season. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, two big changes. Brigetta, I guess is her is the way you say her name. Bridget, yeah. No, that you say a Brigetta. I sure. thought what I learned the other day. Baguette, sure. Baguette, yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, super fucking. I wouldn't say overpowered, but like necessary in a lot of comps. Really good. At, or at low elo. Hanzo is unbelievable now, which is weird to say, because, like, everyone's like, Hanzo means... Yeah. No, they changed his E. His E is a fucking rapid-fire arrow thing that does 200 damage a shot. What did it... Did it used to be the shotgun blast? It used to be scatter arrow. So, like, oh, it would get, it would... like, a good kill or two around a corner. Okay. But he was, like, mainly a sniper. Now he's, like, a mid-ranged fucking harasser type. All right. 
So I don't get the labeling system in Overwatch because does that still even constitute a defense hero? No, well, that's an assault hero. No, well, defense. No. I guess I guess you could call him defense because he if you're sniping. If I you guess the lead idea the attack, camping. you're an assault hero. <laughs> yeah, but if they have the capacity to do that. I'm assuming they had an idea for the labeling system, and I think that it's not necessarily about... Which is weird to say, considering the fact that the game will yell at you if you don't have enough of one Exactly! Class. Like, I wouldn't even fucking care if they didn't, like, really rub your nose in it. Yeah, like, and it'll, like just big red font, like, hey, stop it! Yeah, why do you have so many tanks? Oof! That doesn't make any sense. With it's like, why'd damage. you build the game like this, then? Yeah. Why'd you build so many tanks? And it's just like... It, it, I love Overwatch. I I love having. I, I used to have a lot of fun with it, but like the more and more that I play competitively, the more and more that I watch competitive streams of it, it just makes me upset. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, with League of Legends, you know, the the meta and all the sorts of shit, it changes constantly because there's so many fucking champions, there's so many things going on. But like with Overwatch, there's just so much to take into. Uh, like, for me personally, I think that the amount of characters that they're adding per year, like two or three per year, is just so little. Such a minuscule amount for a game yeah. that is attempting to have like a ten year plan. And it's like Sure, we have we have like what? Okay. Four I did it four or five on the top of my head that I can think of. One of them is a fucking healer that is now completely shitty. Don't even fucking worry about it. Really? Yeah. She used to be tip top top brass. Yeah, Anna used to be great, except they they made everyone else way better, and that's just the, w the way the kind of, these kinds of games play out. Yeah. But the problem is, is that when you when you do it with such a small roster, it's so much more noticeable. Like when you when you talk about like League of Legends, League of Legends is over a hundred like one hundred fifty fucking champions. Yeah. So when you nerf one, it's like, oh, but there's like several other that, that you fill can, the that same can crux. fill the same crux in the role. And I never thought I would tell myself that in my in any of my days that League of Legends is better in that regard than fucking Overwatch, but it's I wouldn't just... say they're better, I'd say they're just better suited for it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that reminds me a lot, it's like, Street Fighter V, Season 1, Nash was a monster. Mm -hmm. He was top two. He was taking majors left and right. Season 2 drops, that man is at the bottom. That game had 16 characters in it. Yeah, That's pretty noticeable when yeah. a character drops and just falls from grace like that. Exactly. So... You know, that's something that I've been like, mm -hmm. and I go to CSGO because I'm like, oh, I gotta, I wanna, I love shooters. I need to play a shooter. I need to shoot something. I need to shoot something that's like, oh. and that was my shooter. Yeah. And then I picked up CSGO and I've had way more, fun, way more fun than I thought I ever was going. I used to love Counter-Strike. It just made me rediscover my love for Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. And it was like, now that I, I never played it competitively. Now I play it in competitive. Well, that's Hold, good. hold on the game. No, I never played. I never played kind of any kind of strike. Like I would always play like a casual match because I was like, oh, I'm so bad. Now that I've gotten to a point where it's like, can't like, you have to hit like a certain year gap in Counter Strike <laughs> to feel like you can have any semblance of competitive nature in it because there's so many other people who have been playing since 1.6. Yeah. So it's like. Okay, when you get over that fucking hurdle where it's now like, oh, everyone's on fucking even ground now. Everyone kind of is in the same zone. It, competitive is just way more fun because, and the best part about it is, it's you would think that it's way more annoying, and it totally is. When you shoot someone, they stay dead for the round, so yeah. you can carry. If you get three shot, you get three kills. You can carry that round, and you can just be like, okay, three kills, play time. And that's great, because yeah. that's actual skill-based, like, now the other team has to think about, like, what they're going to do and, what you know, how they're going to approach this situation, because they can't at any moment, because everyone's on equal playing ground, aside from people having their own weapons, yeah. you know, that are But even then, better. you can still pick the same weapons, theoretically. Yeah, and if you just aim better, yeah. if you know the spray pattern better than anybody else, you're going to fucking win. Like, it's It's great. It's great. Good competitive gaming fun. That's, That's what good. I wanted. As soon as they add competitive surf, I'll be right in there with you. Oof. Good. All right. Back onto it. Back onto it. Tell me we'll, about we'll your even week. On. Tell me about the cool shit you did. Oh, what'd you listen to before that? Did I not mention? You that? Listen, you oh, what it, it's mostly just been like I, the Undernight soundtrack. I actually have been going back through and really? listening to that a whole lot. I, it's it's probably my favorite, one of my favorite fighting game soundtracks of all time. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
Well, that's any time I'm playing cross tag, I put red like roses on. Yeah. Easy. Ruby's the best fuck everybody. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely the best of the Ruby characters, and everyone will see. They will learn. You yeah. thought Ruby's voice was annoying. Blake is a robot. Igus has more of a personality than than fucking Blake does. Yang and Igus is powered by a feather. Yang looks great, though. Yang looks really fun. She maybe is above Blake in terms of voice and acting. She, yeah, well, she, kinda, she has the best voice acting out of all of them. I'm calling it right now. I watched the show. I in disagree. the game, oh, she has mm, the best voice acting. I don't know. I don't know. We'll After watching see. those, like, it makes sense within the context of what she's doing, whereas Ruby is a psychological warfare effect. I, it's, it's tech! It's tech, it's dude! Tech. Woo, got, woo, woo! Like, I don't find that any more annoying than Yukiko blocking and going, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright, I'm alright, over and over again. Yeah, well, I think I'm, I'd rather hear a young girl repeat a line over and over than in the shrillness of what's She's supposed to She's having fun! You leave Ruby alone. We're done talking <laughs> about cross-tag. Ah! Yeah, not fun, isn't it? War cries. Yeah. No! Death cries! <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, but yeah, then the, again, Undernight soundtrack. Mutual Situation, I think, is the name of the song. It's Hyde and, and Seth's battle theme, mm. and it's both of their songs put together, and it's incredible. When we eventually do the Undernight-themed episode at some point, episode <sighs> 35 or so, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the song we're going to use. Um, GMH. But, uh, yeah. Overall, just really can't escape. <laughs> can't do it. All right, I gotta call you, people out right the fuck now. You can't escape your crossing fate anymore. I, I can't. But first, before that, one last thing before that: everyone has access to the green screened or alpha channeled "Can't Escape" thing, yeah. and they're putting it on shit, and it's super funny. And they all use red like roses, and that's perfect. Yeah. In the audio file included with those green screen files, the announcer says "fight," and nobody does it. Yes, it does. I have it. Oh. Nobody uses the fight part. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Nobody does that. Nobody does it. Why? I don't understand. So, that. you guys are finding the right things to put it over, but why is in the fuck up? It's right there. I think the best one I saw was the uh, Max having a panel at Evo. Yeah. And then just, I have a question. <laughs> and Wooly shows up. Red like roses starts blaring. Uh -oh. Can't escape from crossing. F That's the coolest. Like, that has grown on me way more than I thought it was going to. Like, yeah. Rebel 1, I thought, like, I was into the it. Like, right of there. Is turning. The Wheel of Fate is turning. I was into it. But, like, Can't Escape from Crossing Fate, I was like, that's so stupid and dumb. And it's... the more I, like, kept playing that game, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's right up there with Heaven or Hell. Dual one, let's rock. Let's rock. Yeah. It's right up. It's really strong. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. Um, it's weird to think that, like, Blaze Blue's at the bottom of that now. The Wheel of Fate is turning? Well, no, you. Uniel is. Because that's just a fucking word salad. No, that's the best. It's above Blaze Blue for sure. No. It's top three. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there are other anime games like like fucking like Dengeki Nitro Plus. They don't put any pizzazz into it. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna call your game Nitro Plus Blasters Heroines Infinite Duel and then just go round one fight? Yeah. But when you go to the character select of Dengeki Bunko, it says choose your envoy of hope, and that's pretty cool. Oh, okay. So it gets points at other places. Um, all right, so I, yeah, I I am official head of Orlando Fight Nights now. For those of you who don't know what that is, hey. we've been doing local fighting game events every Tuesday for the past two years in Orlando at Campus Cards and Games Two Winter Park. Um, there has been a change in management. I am now officially leader in title and in responsibility. Leader, leader. Yeah. dad. I am dad. That's so weird that they like. They didn't start calling me that until you showed up. It was weird. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, you passing the torch. I don't know what that was. 
Um, you are now dad. For son. those tuning in on just this specific episode, we're not father and son <laughs> yet. Um, so uh, I've been very busy this past week for fighting game stuff. We are negotiating a new location for our monthlies. Venue is fucking dope. It's going to be really sick. Uh, my plan is to build up something that rivals the West Coast and and uh, New York scenes. Yeah. In terms of production value, tournaments. As far as skill level goes, I can't decide that. But I can put on a fucking show. And that's mm -hmm. my plan. So May... No. Mm -mm. We're in May right now. June, June 14th. 14th. Yeah. Uh, is a Thursday. If you are in the Orlando area, come on out to the Geek Easy. We will be doing Dragon Ball, Street Fighter, Guilty... No. And Cross Tag. Dragon Ball, Street Fighter, Tekken, Tekken and Cross, Cross Tech. Tech. Thank you. Thank you, also, leader. I'm not. Co-leader. Um, <laughs> but I'm yeah, it's been very busy. Uh, I'm fucking, uh, what's his face? Tyrion's, Tyrion Lannister. Is the who? advisor to the I don't know. little midget man. No, I know, no, I know who he is. <laughs> I, I don't know Game of Thrones, though. Yeah, I don't either. Um, yeah. You're uh you're the Colleen to the yeah the to Colleen to my my Urian. Urian yeah, come uh, on out <laughs> tear my clothes off and you're over there with the clipboard it's like mm, oh yes. you should really <laughs> yes Max is the new dad yeah. is Max our stepdad now uh, I guess uh. um but yeah it's been very stressful I uh, you know. It, it's, suddenly I went from being almost out of everything where I was like I'm fucking done doing events until I until I literally looked at him and said hey no don't do that and, and I pushed him literally off the deep yeah. end yeah you just said get the fuck back in there you idiot kicked, kicked me right back in and now I'm <laughs> Jay Bailey said you were cool you can't drop that you combo can't, no you can't drop out we gotta get him he's gotta be on the podcast <laughs> We have ins. We do. S CEO special edition. Poof. Uh, Fuck back in there. Start grinding, boy. Shit. Maybe he'd be down for that. He'll yeah. probably be exhausted. Huh. I'll f we'll see. That'd be that'd be a guest for sure. That'd be cool. Um. Well, we only have two heads. We'll figure it out. Um. Just bring the yeti. Yeah. Throw it down. Yeah. There you go. You kind of have to kneel at the end table. There's not enough room on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh. But yeah. No. It's it, it's exciting. Uh, getting everything in order is 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 stressful, but but overall I'm really excited. So hopefully I'll be shilling a lot more of that stuff, and hopefully it's not gonna cut too deep in all the other projects I want to work on, including one hipsters one, on purpose, hipsters on 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 porpoise and uh, personal stuff and job, so and school. So this is a lot of jug I'm juggling, you know. Yeah. It's a, you know, I I You're don't You're doing the my, youth thing. Yeah, you You're know. You're doing the I'm young and I'm I'm yeah. full of ambition. Yeah. And I can't wait for it all to come crashing down. My partner character, you know, he's dead, but I got resonance ready and yeah. I got the juggle going. You got the juggle. I can't cancel into super off of special yet. Shh, don't don't drop that da da da. Don't drop that da da da. Phil will also be commentating cross tag. <laughs> I'm going to be learning cross tag because I figured that if I'm going to. You're going to hang my, around. If I'm going to make my mark on anything, it's I'm going to be second rate Florida yipes. There you go. Um, that's. that's... <laughs> no, you got to make yipes first rate New York Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so he's still better than me. But, but they think of you first. <laughs> Can't escape, can't escape from news. news. And guess oh. what? That's the shortest we've ever had our segment. I don't think so. Yeah. I Every think segment been... is like an hour. Yeah, well, it's really helpful when it's an hour. Because yeah. now there's more time to fill. Yeah, there's more time to... You know, the problem is, is that we were talking about... What we're gonna set up for pre three, we're gonna it's, it's we're gonna have a good old like hash it out, yeah. discuss some shit, and then apparently in literally two weeks, every single 
fucking event got leaked, it feels like. Not only does it feel like everything's getting leaked, but even things that aren't getting leaked, it's like... Are being told to us wholesale. Show, here you go. This is like, what's going to happen. You're going to do it. So now I don't even know what pre-3 is going to be. It's going to be a 20-minute, hey, E3's cool. Get fucking hyped. Here are the dates. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> be here or don't. You've already probably seen most of E3. And that's a scary thought. But the the optimist, the very small optimist in me, is like, if we're seeing all this shit now, yeah. maybe there's this is just like the the cherry of the rest of the, the that's not the analogy I wanted to make, but we're there already. So <laughs> So maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. There that you was, go. There you go. One. Bring it back. Um and just this E3 is just going to be that stacked where it's like, yeah, you need to do a Kingdom Hearts event beforehand because there's just no time because of all the other hype shit going on. So, so just to start it off, it feels like it really went fucking downhill. Like, although the, the situation where it's like companies are owning it when Walmart Canada out of did the thing that no other fucking every retailer just doesn't get. That they can't do in this industry. They're just like, oh, that's fine. Fuck it. Just upload it. Yeah. And uploaded what like this fucking intense list of shit that I will now pull up. The Bethesda hit list. The Bethesda as hit list. Oh my god, they got fucking blown out of the water. Like the every like <laughs> the amount of Twitter. The Twitter salt. I don't want to. Say, I didn't want to say salt, but it's the only word I can think of to describe it. Where it's like people reaching out to developers, like, "Hey, is there any chance we can get a sequel to this game?" And they're like, "Oh, well, how about you just fucking check Walmart, <laughs> see if we'll get a sequel to this game." All right. So the games that got fucking leaked were um, Just Cause Four, the, a new Splinter Cell game. Dragon Quest Builders 2, Lego DC Villains, Borderlands 3, Rage 2, Years of War 5, Forza Horizons 5, Assassin's Creed, and that's just like the beginning of it. They also mentioned The Division 2, Beyond Good and Evil 2, which we know about, yeah. Last of Us 2, Border uh, Borderlands 3, and then also that, that, that everyone keeps kind of glossing over that I'm like freaking out about is FF7 Remake is on there. What? Yeah, you didn't know that? The Walmart Canada list no, is FF7. Is. Oh, oh, it's a <laughs> video game. It's a remake of an old... No, not clicking. No, it's not clicking. I've never heard of this Final Fantasy VII. I definitely would never start a podcast with it. <laughs> Twice. It's weird. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like you would know that. I don't know. I, anyways, but it's like... Yeah. Uh, nobody's talking. Like, and it's... Uh, and then I, I did... I won't say the other thing that got leaked for me. I will not say that because I, I think I have the whole PlayStation thing leaked. And if it's true, um, they're going to beat the fuck out of everyone. Oh, my God. Get <laughs> off it's... of Resetera. No. Well, I think it was Resetera. It always... Oh, well, guess what? New gaff. It's Resetera. <laughs> you do this to yourself every time. But I can't because, you know, it's the it's the one in me where it's like, the content creator in me is like, I have to keep my finger on the pulse. And then the other, the lazy part of me is like, but I just like hearing about it. <laughs> just want to know. I just want to know. Oh my God. It, it's going to be, it's, I don't know if we've even decided if we're going to do a face cam thing for E3, but it's going to be real great when they show off that Death Stranding footage. You've already seen the whole fucking trailer. You're like, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, in tears. I, I'm losing my shit. It's the most here, beautiful thing I've ever I, seen. Here's what I'll do. Here. I won't watch anything, but because I've read up on like what is going to be down the pipeline. For, maybe here's the thing: is we don't know. Like the only person who confirmed that anything's happening is Walmart. Well, well, the only person that confirmed that list is fucking Bethesda. Like they just came out and said, "Okay, yeah, fuck those guys." <laughs> Yeah. Everyone else has been super tight lipped, except I think Gearbox came out today and said Borderlands 3 is not going to be E3. It's not going to be there. It's going to be the day before. And then every news, every fucking uh, joint that's been sharing it. But what if it is, though? Yeah. <laughs> like, no one's buying it. Like, everyone's like, fuck. Like, we've that done. Like, that's how the, the fuck kinda, did Walmart ruin E3? That's the thing is, like, once, once it's out there, unless it's 
actually not true. Yeah, not true. Yeah. You sort of just kind of have to own it because, mm -hmm. like, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and even Nobody if it's you. definitely not true, and you're like, no, that's definitely not true, they're still not gonna believe you. So on top of that. Not only have we had people just straight up telling us what they're going to do, because Sony came out, told us exactly. I was so hyped for pre-E3 to be like, okay, here's what Sony's going to do. I'm glad I called Death Stranding gameplay. I'm super glad I, I called I wasn't that. expecting it to be the big four. I, I was. I was expecting it. I was, uh, the first thing I was like, Ghost of uh, Tsushima, uh, Death Stranding, Last of Us 2, I, and the other one, I Spider Man. I was oh, like, man. they're not gonna show Days Gone. Then Days Gone got a whole hour of gameplay. Game Informer just had it has a whole the whole intro of of Days Gone, like the whole fucking intro. Oh, wow, I really had to like check the the brain database the to remember what the fuck Days Gone was. It it feels like it like literally instead of leaking everything leaking, everyone's just like, let's just make it so nobody because it feels there's got to be one guy. There's one guy who's got his button, like his hand on the fucking button. He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show everyone your penis live on stream. <laughs> direct and feed. Direct feeds. Fucking 4K. Uh, and they're like, ah, shit, whatever. And they just whip it out. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, it... you didn't show my dick. I showed my <laughs> dick. <laughs> All right. These are my still balls. on stream, and now we have to talk about it. <laughs> I'm so excited for that guy's day. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, So, on top of that, everyone's doing reveal events already. Kingdom Hearts 3 had their first fucking preview event. Their, their Let's get that out of the team way. defended... It was like one sheriff, and he was at like a box of donuts. And he but he was guarding he, the fort. But he took someone's phone. Like, that guy's phone is gone. Out of the wind, like he's like they took they they, they confiscated my phone. I was like, yeah. I I I love the fact that you were doing that. I appreciate you. I wonder if he played the game first. Like I hope he played the game first. I hope he wasn't just like kind of trying to be dumb and just doing it first. Because if you fucking missed out on playing Kingdom Hearts three, you're stupid. Yeah. I appreciate it because we were going to get a screenshot literally twenty four hours later. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can be early, but unless, like, if you're just Joe Schmo on the street, don't be a hero. <laughs> if you've got nothing to gain from it. If you fucking wiggled your way into a Kingdom Hearts pre-3 like uh, pre three preview event, and yeah. they're like, hey, this game that's... And you're like, oh, fuck! Yeah, just act like, who are you with? Oh, I'm Polygon. Uh... <laughs> just fucking yeah. keep playing until they kick you out. Yeah, lie. That's what we did it at fucking TwitchCon. It worked out br brilliantly for and us. And guess what? The plan is to not stop doing that. <laughs> the lies continue and they grow more powerful. <laughs> just like Sora in the new Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out on the PS4 there at a is, day. So you, how do you even begin to talk about that gameplay footage? There is one thing. So 60 frames per second is a good start. It's a pretty Start. It changes the way the entire game looks, and it's fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, so, my friend Sharon, who's obviously a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, is probably the only person that came away. And, and, and it made sense for what she was saying. She's the only person that came away from this negative. And she's like, look, this looks great, but it looks like there's too much shit happening. And I forgot... A lot of people who play Kingdom Hearts are casual babies. Yeah. And I love Sharon, but she is not a good video game player. <laughs> just a casual player. So some, so seeing, like, literally 300 systems at play is not what she's about. But for, like, you and me, yeah. literal fucking porn. Yeah. Literal like, combat system porn. Like, like, if you put after images in the hands of the everyday consumer, they can't handle it. <laughs> You can't just let them control that much power. There's no fuck. Uh, but it does. It looked absolutely fantastic. I didn't know trailers were even out till Phil got here. Thank God he got here like an hour early, so we could just watch it. We talked a lot, 
we probably should have watched in silence, looked at each other, nodded, and waited. Nah. But, but well, because what else is there to say? The problem is, is that there's so much on the table. There's that so it, much nitpick. We could do a whole podcast. Is nitpicking the whole thing. You could do a whole, whole podcast of, like, you could lit- we could sit down and just react to it. Yeah. We could be those guys and be like, analyze it and be like, the fa- the the thing that fucked me up and the one that got Max too when I told him is when I, when, I, when they told me when I was like oh you can switch keyblades on the fly now because it makes sense to do it because keyblades have transformations yeah and it also means that like that cool looking keyblade you got in the second world isn't gonna be fucking useless by the end of the game yeah so do you now upgrade keyblades individually do you like or do you use them for certain like Obviously, some of, like the the Monsters Inc. one was like, okay, this is really good for attacking and and sort of single target damage. The Tangled one is all about AOE. But see, even that, it's like it starts out like that because you have claws, so it's all close range shit, and then it becomes fucking yo yos, and you have AOE. So like, but that is that is like crazy. Not as, as crazy the literal as the Tangled fuck off tower, land. yeah, that comes from the ground and tur- and literally lights everything ablaze. Yeah. They God, really that... lit that game, too. Oh. The lighting is fantastic. That lighting was so good. I already... I, I When I play 2.8, I'm like, if the game comes out and it looks like this, I'll be perfectly fine. I think this looks great. Now? Holy shit. They holy have really polished fuck. that game up. Honestly, you can you can wait until 2019 if you need it. Yeah. If they need it... Yeah, absolutely. If, they, if that game comes out and it's perfect, and they have to wait until 2019 to deliver that, that's fine. If I don't have to go through a year of season passes just to kind of get it to the game it was supposed to be, yeah, you're fine. Take that time, do what you need. Looked great. God, it's so good. Stalker two got announced. Stalker's a series a lot of people care about. E three is apparently a month long thing now. E three apparently. <laughs> oh, a couple of couple of things on my side of the uh, the fence. Uh, Black Ops four got fucking revealed. <laughs> yeah. Four. Four. Uh, yeah, everyone called it really hard. That leak was super on point. No I thought single, they literally... No re- single oh, player. Yeah, that. Battle Royale. All multiplayer games. Totally zombies. I still think it looks really fucking good. I didn't see any gameplay. All I saw was this stupid, like, CG thing of a whole bunch of people dropping on a hologram. So... That's all I saw. So, okay, so... Black Ops 3, they tried to do a, thing, a weird thing where it was it came at the crux of the hero shooter thing, wherein the people, you don't play like a random nameless soldier, you play a character now, and yeah. that character has an ultimate, and it worked okay, it was fine, um, but you had all the, you know, the movement up capabilities and stuff like that, mm. so they've taken that away. Yeah, they which, took all the fun stuff away. Which to me is like, yeah, but they still have sliding, which is fine. Sliding, I'll take it. Sliding is alright. Sliding's good. It's a part of a kit. But... Um... They gave you. They gave one character grapple hook. Okay. I, I was hearing it only pulls you forward. It only pulls you forward, but it's like, what does that mean? Uh, Why would you use a grappling hook? Well, because it's a. Because okay, so there's a lot to unpack with that. And for for me, like, I've always looked at Call of Duty. Like the only Call of Duty that I just vehemently did not touch after playing the beta, like at all, was fucking World War Two. I think bringing it back to literally you are the basest model of you. I think Battlefield fucking 1 was a dumb idea. I think all that shit was dumb. I think going back in the past now with future tech shit happening is a stupid fucking concept. Keep your... I, I don't know what it is with COD players that are all about like boots on the ground, boots on the ground. It's like, what the fuck? Like, no one ever has a good enough reason for why wall running isn't the raddest shit. Yeah. No one. But all that said, it looks like in terms of what they're doing for uh, weapon balance, character balance, general game balance is probably the best I've ever seen Call of Duty's multiplayer like ever, like since Black Ops 2, which is insane to me because that yeah. that to me is like one of the best fucking Call of Duty games ever. Um, and... Battle Royale is an interesting concept. They straight up, like, during the reveal said, hey, you know what this is. You know what Battle Royale is all about. What they're doing is different. They're creating a map 
that is actually a combination of all of the really famous Call of Duty maps. I was talking to Austin. I'm like, good for them for not just making Nuke City. Yeah, yeah. Like, Nuke Town new... will 100% be in it. Still be in it, though. But that's a really cool concept. Yeah. I like that a lot. And they've said that vehicles are going to be at play. That's totally going to be a thing. Zombies, apparently is just lost its fucking mind. They are doing crazy shit with That's it. That's great. Um there's a Titanic map. There is a traditional zombies map where like they you follow the actual like zombies storyline that's been going on for years. Oh, with the with the boys. And the final ones in ancient Greece. All right. With melee combat. Okay. Neat cool what the fuck i don't know <laughs> so like that's why i'm like i kind of wish they did make that standalone zombies game a little bit but then i played zombies recently and i'm like this is it's not... difficult it's a lot it's a lot to unpack if you don't know what like zombies is like it is a fuck ton to kind of sit down and go whoa where did it get to the point where it's like i have to like perform literal perform ritual sacrifices yeah. to get to the next part of the game yeah it, and it was a mixture of that combined with like just an okay horde mode that i was like yeah this is kind of i i think if you're not into that kind of game gone for me yeah now. exactly you're, but yeah. shooter man if you think it looks good i'll take your word for it I think it looks great. I, I think a lot of people are going to probably look at me like I'm an idiot because it's like, oh, Call of Duty. Yeah. It's like, I've always thought Call of Duty was like, Advanced Warfare is the one I want you to sit down and play because that's the one I that did. has I played it once. I, I played it once with my friend. He brought his, his like Xbox here and everything. We were playing and we were on the map where it's just fucking candy. Yeah. There's just candy all over the map and we had like l guns with moving electric camo and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I was running on walls and sliding shit and he was sitting next to me. He's like, yeah, Call of Duty's gotten really stupid. Uh, it's not even fun anymore. Yeah! And I was like, what are you talking about? This fuck? is awesome! I run on a wall, and then I jump, and then I air dash, and then I slide when I hit the ground. Bop, bop, bop! Kill. Awesome. Guess what? Halo 5? It's my favorite Halo. It has air dashes, dive kicks, slides. I don't give a fuck. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. I like high mobility in my shooters. Yeah. That's why it almost, it's weird to me. It's, it almost like kind of speaks to why Titanfall fucking failed. Because nobody, how does nobody like movement in their shooters? I don't how know. do you, how are you so fucking bait? Like, I'm sorry, y'all motherfuckers who don't want like wall running and all that shit, you some basic ass bitches who can't hang. That's it. You dumb, you bad, go the fuck back home. Like, if you're gonna sit there and tell me oh, it's about tactical shooting, when the fuck were you ever gonna pick up on Modern Warfare 2, the commando perk, which lets you stab a motherfucker three miles in the opposite direction and go, this is tactical? Fuck you, idiot. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking yeah, about. Still pop it off Bring there. me my fucking wall running back. And the thing is, people who say, like, it's about tactical shooting are the same people who are, like, they're the people who call other people out for camping. Yeah! So, like, what do you want? Play fucking Rainbow if you want Guess... tactical shooting. That's the best tactical besides... It's well, like... no, CSGO's not tactical. It's I would like, call it tactical. I, I'd say, well... It's like, guess what? Go out in, into the army. You're gonna do a lot of camping. I don't like the fucking term tactical. In video games, like it's a. I fucking, like the idea of it. I, I like the idea. I like tactical before RPG sometimes. Tacti but. Well, tactical. The idea of it, I feel like, is just to sit there and be like, you have to use your your thoughts. It's about actually. It's more of a strategy. It's game. more. It's like a chess game. Yeah. It's not just you know, shooty. Yeah. Bang bang shoot bangs like. But that's what fucking Call of Duty is. Like, Call of Duty is nothing but shoot, shoot, bang, bang. You can't have a tactical shooter sit there... with a ballistics knife. Y you can't! You can't have a tactical shooter with one of your fucking main... Like, you have a thing called a kill streak that unlocks you... It gives you the ability to unlock, like, cybernetic fuck-off dogs <laughs> that tear your opponents asunder. You know, you limb can't. from fucking limb. And you're gonna sit there and go, this is tactical. Yeah. Just just operating on a whole other level. But the moment some dude puts his feet on the wall, that's when we have the Whoa, problem. Whoa, too much. I'm so fucking pissed. It's like, and that's, again, that's why it's like I couldn't get into, that was my biggest reason for hating Overwatch, is I, I never felt like movement felt good with any character. I can see that. I wanted everything everybody did, I wanted every character to have. Yeah. Where it's like, if your game doesn't have a sprint, we're already done talking.
we're already done talking. If I don't have a button that I can hit to make me go faster, I'm not going to get that high. I don't want to play it anymore. And if you don't have a sprint, you better you better move at like a fucking yeah. brisk pace. Yeah, like fucking... This is a shooter I don't think anyone's played. Maybe you have Nexus. Yeah. Yeah. That was an awesome game. That's an arena shooter. Yeah. Arena shooters are where... Are, it's fucking weird to me that You're like... Jumping and... Sp I fucking love those kinds of games. Arena shooters are the fucking best. That's why Unreal Tournament is still the goddamn best. That's yeah. why, you know, anything Unreal, fucking yeah. fantastic. Um, Doom... Doom is probably the closest thing we'll get to an arena shooter in a very long time. Yeah. Because uh, I say that with Quake Champions out, and I meant that. Rip. <laughs> rip, and, rip and peace Rip Quake. and fucking shit. I don't like Quake Champions. I didn't even... I always forget it came out. It's fine. But it's... I feel that way a lot about Bethesda. Where it's yeah. like, it's some of their games, they just sort of release. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the hell the name of the game was that they... The horror one. Was... Evil Within. No. What? But yeah, that was Bethesda. What the fuck? Yeah. No, the other... No, the first person... The recent one. The first Prey. Per Prey. Yeah, yeah, I don't... It's bad. I don't fucking know. It's bad. But that's what I'm saying is like... That's why it's like Bethesda doesn't need its own conference. If you're just going to release a Skyrim card uh, game... I won't, and I, won't, like, I won't go that far. I think right now Bethesda is kind of like in the, in the mainstream eye. But a lot of people are fucking... Well, because the other thing is is that like... When we think about it, like, Bethesda games are some of the most successful, like, single-player games of, yeah. of like, this, like, current generation, like, past generation, current generation. Yeah, I guess. Like, consistently, they perform, outperform a lot of other, like, Western and Japanese-developed games all the fucking time. Skyrim has been released 17,000 times, and yeah. it's still making money. And that's why I'm like, I don't know if you need a conference just for Skyrim. Like yeah, it might deserve one, but I don't know if that means you need one. I I'm I'm only looking forward to oh, it because I I'm I'm hoping that they finally fucking announce that Starfield game that I've been hearing so much about. Yeah, which is great because I need more space RPGs. Yeah, I, and I if that's the one that gets me into Bethesda, cool. If it's just a Bethesda RPG with space dressing, I'm gonna drop it like a bad fucking habit. Yeah, I can't. Um, <laughs> I can't get into fucking but and the. Good, good fucking majority of the reason is because they don't get off of that fucking engine, that fucking creation engine or whatever it's called now. Terrible been, one that doesn't work. We yeah, know it that doesn't they've been work. using consistently since Fallout Three. But it's so easy since for two thousand and eight. But it's so easy for fans to patch it. Call of Duty still runs on Source. What are you talking about? No, Titanfall still runs on Source. It looks amazing and runs great because Source is a good engine. Yeah. Maybe creation fucking wasn't. Maybe the next uh, Bethesda game, Western big open world RPG, should run on Source. Maybe they should give that Luminous engine I've heard so much about a try. <sighs> Oof! They will ne they'll never come out with a game if Square Enix can't fucking figure their goddamn bullshit no, out. Why maybe. the fuck? Let me let me give you this only Japanese game engine. Bam! Bam! Checkmate, atheist. Just use Unreal. Give them the monopoly. The fucking thing works. You can make games that look like Guilty Gear, and you can make games that look like Gears of War. Get, say what you will about Epic Games holding a monopoly, close to ten cent levels of money. Yeah. But I'd rather that happen if what they are doing works. Like, <laughs> it works like, really good. It works super good, and I understand that everyone makes their money through it. Like, because the problem is, is that there's a. I'm sure there's a substantial amount of money that is lost through like the usage usage of other engines. But like, which is why, which is why Titan Falls are gonna use like all of the the proprietary Frostbite engines, and why racing games are gonna use Frostbite engines uh. for EA, and why Anthem's gonna use fucking Frostbite, like. Uh, God. Awesome. We're about it. You were talking about an engine that's apparently like really good at one thing, but don't add anything to it. Is the Destiny engine? Have you? I, I know you don't keep up with that. Apparently, a good portion of the reason why anything is wrong with that game is because it is so monstrously hard to work in that engine and add content that is actually fucking up the workflow. I feel like that's a problem you detect early on. Yeah! And then you switch. You don't brute force through it 
and then make it really shitty for yourself down the line, especially when you're doing a bunch of post-launch content. Yeah, except publishers don't give a shit about that. Publishers throw $500 million budgets and go, you better not use that on the game. God damn you. Be that you better is not. for the commercials. That's, you That's for the pre-3. You know how much fucking money a goddamn Super Bowl 30 second ad is, you fuck? In the words of the, the late Cliffy B, who is not dead, do you know how much this poster cost? <laughs> this was a very expensive poster. I own a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Play my games. I'm cooking up experiences, and I'm putting them on the banner, and they're not going to be on Xbox. So Cliffy B killed, killed a lot of people today. Cliffy uh, B self-destructed so, his... Did you, did you, you know why it's shitty? You know why it's even shittier? Because nobody knew about it, by the way. Oh, it was one of those. It was, it one, was one of those. Yeah. This fucking... <laughs> it was open the door. We're out of money. <laughs> And it's stopping today. You better call up the Twitch guys. See if you can find someone to room with. So, I don't. Uh. I I can't find the specific story, but I did hear about it through um, a podcast. Uh, I forget which one. I want to say Easy Allies. Maybe? Who the fuck was I listening to? No, it was. Uh, oh, who the fuck was it? Uh. No, it was. It was Resetero. Never mind. Um, so. This guy was being asked about Radical Heights. Hey, when are you going to get, like, female, like, fucking character, character models. models? And he's like, oh, soon. And then literally the next tweet, oh, I guess fucking not. <laughs> and he goes, my 10-year-old daughter sent me the press release for Boss Key closing down and asked if it was going to be okay. Thanks, Cliffy B. Wow! Cliffy B has to go to 65 homes and tell 65 10-year-old daughters. How, okay, so, like, when I saw that and I saw the, like, the super heartfelt fucking response that he made on Twitter, I was like, he took that L. No. He's finally accepted it. No, I disagree. It. I think he's still stroking his dick. He's oh, like, I'm gonna take a yeah. break, and then I'll come back again, Dude. and I'll sink another company. Dude, like, I agree wholeheartedly only because nobody knew until he tweeted yeah. holy fuck like <sighs> coming soon to true tv it's a new reality show where 65 contestants have to see how long they can keep cliffy b's shitty ideas afloat it's called season one was a massive success it's called gamer royale Game <laughs> uh, developer royale it's called copy and paste <laughs> guess what Cut Maybe you should have just made a game instead of chased trends, which doesn't work. Okay, ever. So, but here's the other thing. So, yeah. before we get into all that bullshit surrounding why Cliffy B is a piece of shit, a couple of things. A, Cliffy B is fine. All those employees are not. And one of the biggest problems as to why this is a, like an even bigger problem is, is it's just. Nobody, when you hear about a cancellation of anything, even if they're if a, of a game development studio that was working on stuff that you didn't like, it's never fun to hear about someone losing their fucking job because I can assure you, not everyone who works in the game development field is doing what they want. No. Like, it's a 100%. job like any fucking other. Like, I'm, sh I'm sure that a lot of people who are working on the Destiny team, on Call of Duty, on all these games that are lauded for being shit, like, in the, in the not mainstream, but, like, the the Reddit threads and all yeah. like ah fuck this game. Those people hear that, see that, feel that, and realize that on some level their game is causing this visceral reaction. Yeah. Their work. So when when you're talking about an entire like company of people who just simultaneously lose their job after having the biggest dick punch of a failed not one but two failed IPs. Yeah. That is soul crushing and anyone who sits there and goes they deserve it go fuck yourself like you you have no empathy you are the worst kind of person and you can I totally criticize someone's game without making them feel like a piece of shit and i would 100 percent like to say all jokes that we make are directed entirely towards cliffy B. who is a fuckhead who has absolutely done everything in his power to be a fuckhead yeah and 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 is a millionaire he's Gonna make it out okay. 
He's yeah. fine. There's no re. These people are not millionaires. They are a slightly maybe white collar workers. Yeah. Maybe making enough money to live comfortably. To, they were just talking about taking a little one to Disneyland today. Holy shit. Cliffy B gets to go home to his fucking, like, shitty 8 out of 10 wife, shitty fucking macaroni and cheese restaurant, macaroni. and his goddamn, like, millionaire winnings as he looks at his gold plate copy of Jazz Jackrabbit. What do those fucking guys get? Two failed games? Fuck you, Cliffy B. A fucked up resume. Dude, huge. Fuck my asshole, you pe- you, you, oh. uh, And, man... I just hope that Epic Games is still like, hey guys, listen, we tried once. If you're still down to join up and sit in our well, lobby, no, no, even for pay, then, like, even then he was like, you remember when all that shit went down when he was accusing Epic of stealing employees out yeah. from under him, and 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 his employees came out and were like, we're not fucking assets, we're human beings. Yeah, we, we don't if we don't want to work here, we don't want to fucking work and here. And they're not stealing us; they're saving us. <laughs> You know, like it just it uh, upsets me because I'm so I'm, I'm I love this industry. I love this shit. I I'm all about it. Game developers need fucking better hours. They don't need that crunch as much. Like don't fucking crunch. You make bad games when you're tired. You do everything bad when you're tired. Yeah. Stop that shit. Yeah. Make get unionized. Get all this shit going. Save fucking video games. That's the real reason. All these fuckhead publishers doing everything in their goddamn power to take the power away from the people who are putting the games in our goddamn consoles. Like, fuck off, dude. Like, it, and like, the, it's, it's, I would be on Cliffy B's side if he wasn't such an irredeemable fuck he's a about big, he's everything pretty big he douche. did. Dude, huge. What is, is he big? No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna watch that. We're gonna watch More that. like boy small. <laughs> <laughs> Man little. So on top of that, he had also just recently released a lot of um and it might even be have been his idea. I'm not gonna sit there and say that Cliffy B doesn't have good ideas. This guy was the head of like he was at the the cusp of fucking Unreal and Gears. Yeah. Like he he knows what he's doing. Maybe good idea. Yeah. Maybe he had good idea. Uh, well, excuse me. I'm about to read this shit for you. I'm really excited. Uh, did you see that fucking picture I showed you? I did not. Here. This is the concept art from a game that they were trying to sell. Oh, that's what that was for? I'll be called, honest. I didn't read it. I just looked at called it. Called Dragonflies, which is uh, a codenamed game, never to be released, that would take the role... You would take the role of a ninja or samurai living in airships who are outfitted and use their dragons to face off against zombies. All right, that's a lot of clashing would allow, ideas. Would but allow I'm players down. to find and hatch eggs to raise more dragon partners. Meant to, it was meant to learn from Lair, which is in the canceled Scalebound. So once again, really fucking just derivative. I think dragons are are a curse. I think if you pick dragon, then you're doomed to fail. Yep. Then they were going to talk Sorry, about Spyro. uh something called dog walkers, which was you would have the ability uh. Crews would work together to control Zoid-like mechanical walkers against other teams uh, inspired by World War II tank battles, which sounds fucking dope. So, like, you would have a team that pilots, like, each limb, and yeah. then you fight other teams? Yeah. I would fucking... That game I would play. 100%. Yeah. 100 percent. 100 fucking percent. These are really cool, unique ideas that would probably do really well. Uh, and, and, and apparently publishers just yeah. didn't fucking buy it because no, it's they're not like, the next Battle Royale game. Put bikes in Fortnite. Make a fucking battle royale. Put, put the Thanos. bikes and put them. Make Thanos do a dab. If Thanos does a dab on the haters, then the kids won't buy it. <sighs> Capcom it's... characters can't beat up Marvel characters, but Thanos can dab as he gets his head blown off by a shotgun. You know, all I'm, right, oh, motherfucker. That... Like I, a part of me is always like, I don't want to be negative about video games because there's so much to love about video games. But then that rears its fucking ugly head and you're just like oh stop it oh we're yeah. the worst you have to point out the negatives so they improve yeah you gotta let them know they're wrong but they can't hear you they can never hear you not unless you not unless you're, just saying, not unless you're not buying anything then they go oh fuck yeah and guess what 
People don't vote with their wallets. Ah, I want to say last year was definitely a year of that happening. I mean, with the Star Wars battle. Now game. they're starting to, but not enough where it's like. Yeah, and then Destiny Two just. EA is not going to stop doing loot boxes. Yeah, Destiny Two is not going to get any better because it just had its most profitable fucking yeah month in a very long time. Yeah, and those people hate that game. So why do they keep buying stuff? They don't hate the game. They're angry. I don't hate the game. They're disappointed. I'm disappointed. Disappointment. Yeah. Well, then stop spending money on it. Oh, I haven't. I haven't fucking even loaded it. No, up. not you. Oh, you're right. The I other, know you're right. The other you're, use. You're completely right. Like I, but I took a on hard... the off chance yeah. that you might like it. Yeah. I don't know. I took a hard line stand. I, I, I finally decided. It's like no, I, I'm, I'm done. I am not supporting Konami anymore. It sucks because only then did I realize how many like IPs I absolutely adore that come from Konami. Where it's like Super Bomberman R is coming out on PS4. I'm like, I fucking love Bomberman. Not gonna buy this game. It's a Bomberman game where you can play as Jehuti, Pyramid Head, like all it's it's their own cross tag battle. So what you're saying is I'm bringing over Super Bomberman and Son of the. Ages. But I don't want you to buy it. I don't, I don't want either. anyone to buy it. I don't either. But I want it. I, but, but I want it so bad. <laughs> but I can't. Zone of the Enders, 60 FPS, 4K. I'm not gonna buy it, and that kills me. I'm gonna play the PS3 one because like I already have it, so like I'm not gonna sell it. Yeah. But like, ah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it's bad. Terrible. It's really bad because it's, it's. I scoff at DDR machines now. <laughs> Where's Bimani? Oh wait, get me a uh, in the groove setup. <laughs> I... Why did they put these on the diagonals? It's fine. Who said this was a good idea? Oh, it's not in the groove. That's. That's Pump It Up. Oh, it is Pump It Up. Which may also be Konami. I don't think it is. Pump It Up's mostly Korean was music. Was it Bimani fucking Konami? Or was that Neo Wiz? I am not no. too sure. No. I don't go... No, Bimani was Konami. Bimani made all those fucking rhythm games. And then, yes, and yes, then, yes, 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 yes. And yes. then Neo Wiz is just worked exclusively with Max titles. Yeah. That's it. Konami just... It's all Jubeat from here on out. Taito. <laughs> Taito. Rhythm boxing. Hmm. Did we just come up with something? Rhythm boxing. Yeah. Well, I already told you. I came up with that fucking rhythm game where you swing the swords in VR. Oh, oh yeah. I was pissed. Oh, I was yeah. so angry. I've been thinking about that for months. Uh, Beat Saber? Beat Saber, yeah. You, you, you have your two swords, and they come at you at different angles, and you swipe along in the music. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool now with VR... You have someone stand there, and basically every song is a boss fight. And, like, how the fight is orchestrated is to the music. Mm -hmm. Fucking Beat Saber, came, Beat out. Saber came out. It made me look like a right fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. It made you look like you were. You know what you're talking about because it worked. I'm a prophet. You're right. I'm always <laughs> right. You're right about me being right all the time. Uh, oh, what is this heartbreaking. Heartbreaking amount of time. I don't mean to yell at you guys in your ear. It's just I'm I get so worked up about this shit because it's just like, yeah, it's a lot. Blazinski is just such a fucking cock, man. I, I dislike him majorly. Yeah. Um. And guess and like, I always thought like, even when he was back in like years and working for Epic, like he's still kind of a douche, but he could at least back up what he was saying. Or it's like, yeah, my games are doing really well, because they it, were. It fit with the persona of the games he was trying to sell. Yeah, but like, now, wholeheartedly. It's, now it's sad. It's yeah. like, buddy, just stay retired, maybe. So, so one of the, I mean, one of the core concepts that a lot of people always talk about, like, why Lawbreakers failed. Like, not only did it, like, enter, I honestly think, not only did it enter into a saturated market, but Cliff Blazinski and his team were incapable of selling that game's core gameplay loop to the correct audience. By attempting to not break away from the Overwatch comparisons, but to embrace them and instead fight back against them consistently and thoroughly through every single interview thing. He, uh, he instead of trying to create his own path, 
took a very overzealous attempt, like approach to try to be like, oh, my game is not like this game. My game is not like that. Overwatch game. is for the anime crowd. It's for anime Whatever nerds that or means. young kids or which that doesn't fucking work anymore. My game has cursing and blood and blood like. No, and he, and, he, and he talked about how, like, what my game differs in tone. It's like, if you play fucking Lawbreakers and you play Overwatch, there is an inherent difference between the gameplay loops. They are not the same fucking game. It no. is not even a hero shooter in a lot of ways. There is definitely hero shooter elements, but it's not the same fucking game. Yeah. And, oh, God, my nose. It must be like the, like, here is only dust. I feel like it's... I only get like sinus problems in uh, right because the that, fucking vent. That all right? I'll tell you what. I'll buy a duster <laughs> and I'll dust the place next time. I'll just sit over there next time. Well, no. Well, are you trying to ruin something special? All right. I'm sorry. I mean, we started swapped, but I don't know why it ended up like this. I don't know. Either. Fair enough. Um, we'll work something out. But like the guy, like he could have. You could have just said, like, look, I have a different game. And I want you to play it to yeah. find out. Like, and if you, when you try to, like, it, it astounds me that there are game developers, like, people who are, like, the head of their team, designers, who don't know how to express what makes their game different. And that's what I think is the, is the biggest problem, is that, like, had he had gone with the game's strengths, had he had sold that game... At the point in which it was supposed to be sold off of, the core gameplay loop, yeah. it probably would have had a niche fucking... About what a like normal following. Nexon game would receive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it would have been fine. Which is sustainable. I would have been a part of that niche. I enjoyed my time with Lawbreakers. I wanted to see it grow. Yeah. But, like, he he just consistently was like, oh no, Overwatch is too similar. It's like, no, it's not though. And I and I feel like that must it must have been a conversation that was being had internally. Was no, we're really not fucking though. Like we're not that fucking close. Like we're cause they're not. It's 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 so much more different. Like they just because you have you can say Battlefield and Call of Duty are the same game, but they're not. Their core yeah. gameplay loop is separate. You can say Tekken and Street Fighter are the same game. They're not because their core gameplay loop works differently from one another. And like that's, I would do... actually, I was, I was gonna say mention fighting games. I'd actually say it's the inverse, where the the core gameplay loop is the same, but how you participate is what wildly changes. Yeah, yeah. But but like there's diff there's like there's room, and it's he even said like in an interview, there's room for these kinds of games to succeed. We hope to get to that point, and that was probably the most like grounded he'd ever come off like. I don't think you were remembering that quote right because I heard it yesterday no I, well, well yeah okay I remember yeah. it's basically he was talking about <sighs> do you want to know what the quote was yes because it, it was it was something along the lines of the big shooters right now are like Counter-Strike Overwatch Call of Duty Battlefield and he listed off a couple of games it's like yeah and we're shooting to be like top three no that's like, what he said super fucking that's snarky said, but about no, it no but, but like, like he also said he specifically said during that statement, like there's room there's for room, everybody, room for everybody, and there but is. Like, if you where we do want to get, which is like everyone wants to succeed, you can't mm. fault him for saying that. Yeah, what you can fault him for is turning around and saying, "I want to make another billion dollar IP." Yeah, well, hey, hey, buddy, we all do, but like lightning in a bottle. I wouldn't even say that. It was just a, like horrible. Like I'm telling you, it he was needed a PR guy. That's say, what I know. I, I genuinely think he needed somebody to sell the game for him because I don't think he should have been allowed to talk. I think that he should have just not been in the position that he's in. I think as a designer, he is strong. As a lead designer, he is not. Fair. I think that I think that what unfortunately the the problem with that kind of ego and that kind of person is that you can't tell them no. They won't yeah. take your idea and go. They'll they'll keep continuing the course. Yeah. And those kinds of leaders will always fail. They will get to a point where they are they are okay. Their their team will suffer. They will falter. Their product will falter. You see this in the workforce every time. If you have a leader who is not able to turn down and go, what do you think? And then enact those worries. 
that person is going to fail you every time. Yeah. So Cliff Blazinski is the same kind of egotistical douchebag who got beat up in high school, found a little bit of success, mm. and decided to go running with it as a revenge to everybody who dislikes me. And you, you look at it through everything, that through the marketing, through everything he was saying, it was all because he was upset that people were saying things. Yeah. He was upset at the Xbox crowd for saying, like, how dare you not want to work with us. He was upset at the, the, the Overwatch crowd for comparing the games, like, even though they were similar at the time. Yeah. No one had it in hand. They, no one knew. Yeah, because nobody... Yeah, because no one was told. No one was told. No one was told. He didn't deny it. He just said, no, it's better. Better, weebs. Stop hugging your Daki Makaras and eating your Pocky for a second. And play a real game. Let's just stop talking about Cliffy B. Yeah, Fuck Cliffy B. Hey guys, at at uh, um, I wish you all the best at Bosky. I, I really do. I Good wish, luck. I, I hope everybody gets a fucking job. Like I really next hope we week. can stop doing that. Enjoy your weekend. Get a job like on Monday. I hope like everyone just fucking eats that team up. I hope so. And and hey, don't put these last two projects on your resume. And if you do, maybe like. Advisor, assistant, consultant, consultant. <laughs> Pretty it up a bit, doll it up a bit. Let's talk about some. Let's talk about some things. Some more leaks. Some, There's no. so many goddamn leaks. No, no, oh, no leak. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Then who said the N word this week? Uh, no. Ooh, that's a good point. But no, no? I have not heard any. any, any Nobody. N-words. No. Well, guys, that's the end of the podcast. Yeah, we did it. Our job is done. We stopped it. We saved. We, sa- we, we solved racism. Now we can use the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> We've leveled up. Um, um, no, what's what's happening in the big wide world? Uh, well, Mila Jovovich is doing stuff. Don't know who that is? It's escaping me, but I know the name. Hey, Resident Evil. All right. You know what she's doing? Oh, ah, no. That yeah. one. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. What is it? It's a Monster Hunter movie. Okay. <laughs> and it's directed by the same guys, Resident it's Evil. Wh- her and it her husband. And her in the starring role. All right. So, first of all, and I don't get how people can't see this right away, Monster Hunter works way better as an episodic series. Yeah. Easy, clean. Yeah. Monster of the week. Monster of the literal monster of the week. Yeah. Or episode for preparation. Episode for the hunt. Episode of cooldown. Easy. Yeah. Oh, they announced this project way back. Why? It's got a budget of fifty million dollars. I ask why they keep giving them money, but for whatever reason, the Resident Evil movies do really well. Resident Evil: The Final Chapter made three hundred and twelve million. The whole series grossed a billion dollars, which is fucking ridiculous because those movies are garbage. Yeah, but it's the same crowd that really enjoys fucking Call of Duty. <sighs> and it, they they like the. It's like, me. They like. It I'm the they... bad guy. It's you. <laughs> You want to see her slide under the fucking... <laughs> I think the last one I watched was Apocalypse. I don't think I... I think I saw the first one. And I'm like, this is fine. And then I just saw clips from all the other ones. I'm like, holy shit, this isn't Resident Evil. No, no, you have to watch, like, up to a certain point. Like, My dude. friend has basically the Criterion collection of that. He has the entire series in Steelbooks. Oh, my God. I don't know fucking why. He doesn't even play Resident Evil. <laughs> No, but... I don't get it. It's yeah. whatever. If he played Resident Evil, he wouldn't like those fucking movies. No, nah, that's true. That must be it. Yeah, that's the thing. If you play Resident Evil, you're not going to like those fucking movies. Just remember, Wesker turns into, like, a worm, I think. Remember how they fucking... They no. literally lifted an element from the movies to use in-game? That's the reason why 6 is the way it is, isn't it? No. Yeah. Red Queen came out before 6, though. Red Queen is a computer system that they they made up in like Resident Evil One, the movie. Yeah, and they brought her on for fucking Umbrella Chronicles. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. It, yeah, I forgot about which Umbrella are all Chronicles. canon, by the way. Both one and two are completely canon. Where does 
Raccoon is... Operation Raccoon City is in canon, right? No. No, it's not canon. That squad based shooter that came out recently, Umbrella Core. That's not canon either. Did you play that at all? Oh fuck no. I actually did. You really? It had a free beta. Uh, which, it, it came out of fucking nowhere. The beta just, like, showed up. Yeah. And I played it, and I'm like, this is fine. Mm. And then the price tag said $40. I'm like, no. This is not This fine. is less fine now. This yeah. is far less fine. I would have played Operation Raccoon City 2 before I played that fucking game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just, um, don't make mo uh, video games into movies. Just, like, don't do it. No, but why, how are you gonna say that to somebody? If it works... If they make money, why? How? How? What's the argument? Because I feel like you'd make more money by doing something else. No, you wouldn't. Or you'd make more money by it doing. It grossed a, a billion dollars. Or you'd make more money by doing it good. No, you wouldn't. We know that. We know that. I know, but I feel like they could have just done Resident Evil and made it like like Resident Evil, and it would have still been successful if they had done it right. I wanna. I hundred percent wanna say. After 4, when those movies started doing fucking good, I 100% feel like Capcom went the direction they did with the series because of how fucking well those movies were doing. Yeah. I want to say 100%. I like the one no. of the main... Because if... Because Resident Evil 5 is still one of the top selling fucking games. Yeah. I, I, think, I, think, Resident Evil, I think Resident Evil 5 is the most successful. It's between 5 and 6. Everyone yeah. hates 6. 6 still fucking makes gangbusters. Yeah, and I don't know why they hate Six. It's fun. Six is great. It's not, Res it's not Resident Evil. <laughs> Turn your head off. It's not Resident Evil. Play the game. It's fun. It's a fun cooperative experience. I think I'd hate it if I played it alone, though. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. That might be why. Don't play the game. If you're going to play it alone, play Mercenaries. Yeah. that's It's serviceable on Mercenaries. It's funny because that's like a co-op mode, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. And it's fun. Um, no, I was just getting, I, I, I felt the same way about, like, because I, I had gone back and watched some playthroughs of, like, Silent Hill games, and it, it, it made me think, I was like, why haven't they done, like, a fucking Silent Hill movie? They did. Uh. Did two of them. Three of them. They did three. And none of them are Silent Hill. Well, they did two or three. The first one they gets close. Hold on. But it, like, Silent Hill is such a n cool concept. I, with look, awesome creature designs. Look, just make a horror movie. Don't put fucking three D in it. Don't shove Pyramid Head in. Just make it a cool psychological horror thing. I, I feel like people, people forget up. how good the first Silent Hill movie actually was in comparison. Well, when I went back and looked into reviews and stuff, they're like, it's the prettiest looking bad movie. It's not. I'm where, so, it's like not interesting. Yeah, it's not interesting. But the problem is that it's like. They got the feel down. They even had Akira Yamaoka do music for it. Yeah. So it's like, like if you go, the, there's a the strongest fucking part of that movie is the intro. They that whole like when the fucking sirens hit and it starts going into like Silent Hill, that is a strong, scary moment. Like it, I don't know if you remember it at all. I haven't seen it. We I will would, watch it. It is strong, it. and they use the the angles. The PS1 camera angles That's during that whole great. thing. It is a fantastic rendition of that whole scene. Yeah, so it is so super they did what cool. they did in the game. Yeah, yeah, and it, and, and it was the be it was like the best part of the movie. Yeah, but yeah, it was the coolest part. Guess what? That just, was the good one. That was a good, was part. The good one. And, and then, then it starts Silent, deviating. And, and this no Silent Two was oh my god. But like, just take uh, the fucking not Harry Mason, Silent Hill Two. What's his fucking name? James Sunderland. James Sunderland. Just do James Sunderland's story. No, I... Mm. See, that's a hard one for me. You lose something by not being able to play it, but like... Or at least do something in that same vein where it's not just... Oh, uh, Pyramid Head's jumping out of the wall! Oh, God, he's in 3D! Duck crowd! All the popcorn's everywhere! <laughs> This dude just spilled his cheese fries on the person in front of him. Yeah, this now there's a boss fight in fucking row three. Yeah, this boy's eating beans in the theater. Hey. I don't know. I did not hear about the new Thundercats news. Tell me about those Thundercats news. Anyways. But I I, I am, as someone who has now been through a, a pretty, you know, feel like I have a good grasp on film now. Yeah. 
better grasp than I had before. Um, it's just agonizing to see, like, not only are new things not being done, but things are being adapted in ways where it's like you're not even either keeping the spirit or you're trying to take it in a new direction that just doesn't fucking work. And it's like, this will sell because people know the, the brand. People will go to see a Monster Hunter movie because they like Monster Hunter, right? So, why wouldn't you just fully pander to those people and make something they'd actually want to see? Because the, the concept is you're not trying to sell to those people. The concept is you're trying to make this... It's like the Monster Hunter World thing. It's like you're not trying to sell to fans, you're trying to sell to the casual audience. You're trying to bring more people in. And that's 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 the problem, is that the publishers don't understand that, like... The casual audience is not going to give a shit about this thing. Yeah. The only reason why Resident Evil did so well is because it came out at a time where zombies were fucking huge. Yeah. Like, people loved zombies. They were all about it. And they just capitalized every single fucking yeah. step of the way. So, and they made like a, and people love following the story. They love stories. They love stories. It doesn't have to be super complex. It doesn't have to be super confusing. Yeah. They just give you a story to follow and they'll enjoy it. Good, good fucking example. My absolute biggest guilty pleasure movie series is fast and furious whole fucking way through yeah there is a scene in the latest movie where jason statham spoiler alert vin diesel is a bad guy he does the virgil thing okay. and then you find out the reason why is because the bad girl stole his baby and killed his baby mama that would Make me go full virtual, yeah. Yeah, and he starts beating everyone's ass, but then he kills Jason Statham, quote unquote, only to be like, save my baby while I'm doing the dumb shit and making sure that my team stays alive. Meanwhile, they're in Antarctica with tanks trying to go after a submarine that has a nuke on it. You're so furious. No, it's so good. I'm not furious. I'm no, excited. What I'm they're so oh, furious. But they're so fast, too. <laughs> so they're having gunfights in Antarctica while up in the air where this woman is in her flying air fortress. Jason Statham shows up and finds the baby and puts him in a bulletproof fucking... Well, I don't think it's bulletproof. But it's like a the baby holder, the handheld baby yeah. holder. And he is fighting people while holding the baby. And he puts on a head... All the while, puts on headphones and is blaring Alvin and the Chipmunks music while he's wholesale slaughtering people. And he's making goo goo gaga noises at the baby to keep him oh, 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 happy. And it is the fucking best movie! It is so bad and, and so good! And everyone goes and they pay money. And they watch that movie, and then they go home, and they hop on their computers, and they type Call of Duty is better as a tactical shooter. <laughs> I know I'm a part of the problem, but I can't stop! I really am upset that I didn't get to see the new Triple X movie in theaters where he is skiing down a mountain with no snow on it, <laughs> doing wall rides on semis. <laughs> Vin Diesel is anime. He did it. He's he's a real life anime, and that's my favorite part. Is that like Fast and Furious is straight up an anime. There is a segment and that fucking thing where they throw concussive grenades at this like super high tech government facility that no one thought they were gonna find. They show up, it's only two people to show up, grab a thing and go, ha ha, find us later, and just fuck off. They don't kill anybody, they don't do any of the real life shit you would do. It is literally an anime villain entrance. And they're okay. just like, damn, we gotta go beat that so, girl. So in in Fast and the Furious, at this point in the story, are they still just a street gang? No, nah, no. Is Vin Diesel? He's just a terrorist now, right? They're they're outlaws. They're they're genuinely outlaws that the government will There's every now big and then bounty posters but it's, but right like, next to the but here's fucking the thing, lawbreaker but here's poster. The thing. At it is it is the fucking anime thing because you know what. Because both The Rock and Jason Statham were villains in the previous movies, and then they joined the cast! It is that anime archetype! Alright, 
and they win through the power of love and family. Okay, so now ready? So now ready? We're going to come all the way back around. I'm, okay. about, I'm about to loop us around. Do it. All right. So you have this this action series, this right. long-running action series, right? right? You got your main character. You got his cast of characters. And as the thing goes on, it keeps escalating, getting crazier, and the cast of characters keeps growing. Yeah, yeah. You got villains becoming friends and I all got this it. shit. I'm on it. Okay. People like Dragon Ball. Let's make a Dragon Ball movie. Oh, no. <laughs> but let's not make it like Dragon Ball because that's not what people, the general audience wants to watch. They want to watch this weird fucking high school thing. So why would you adapt a Shonen series for an audience that doesn't care about the original property and that doesn't pander to the original audience when you could just make a new Shonen series with Vin Diesel <laughs> and everybody will just come to see it because there's no prerequisite. It's just a new good thing. I understand. And I feel like, <laughs> on some level, <laughs> Resident Evil movies are still better than the Dragon Ball Evolution because I can watch Resident Evil, whereas with Dragon Ball Evolution, I will seize <laughs> the moment it appears on That was screen. just for the, the Shonen comparison, but like the talks was like, yeah, we're going to make a Naruto movie. Why? Better yet, we're going to make an Akira movie. Who? Akira is the kind of movie that people go, oh, you got to watch it. Yeah. And like everyone says it, but like nobody really knows why. Nobody knows where to find a copy. Yeah, you know, like no watch cartoon like, online. And then they go like, wow, this is a weird movie. Why do people like this movie? But like, I remember there was a, a fucking commercial like back in the day where there was like a vodka commercial talking about like, it was a vodka commercial on MTV saying like the best music, the best anime. And you're like, who the fuck is this poor? <laughs> like, wow. What are you, the best vodka? Like, excuse me? <laughs> Man, Sky is really. Yeah, like. 50 cents in the club, smacking hoes in their face at the mere mention of them coming up onto his grill. And that motherfucker turns around and turns on My Hero Academia it's, in the club uh, and blares uh, it. And he turns on peace sign. He's like, let's go. <laughs> Go, comes out next year and says my entire album was produced by Hiroyuki Sawano. <laughs> and you're like, what? I 50, really hope. stop! And then he goes, I bought vitamin water. 50, stop! I hope in two weeks I can say that I was listening to the 50 Cent Sawano collab. <laughs> But I, I'm afraid that that future does not exist. Don't lose your shawty in the Her club. Hard cut to the Chrono Trigger game over, but the future refused to change. <laughs> oh my god. And uh, it just. And, and also, it's like. It's just insulting. It's like it's like yeah, we need to make an Akira movie cuz the animation wasn't good enough. It's just kind of like it's like nobody this it doesn't matter that this story is good or that people like it cuz it's a video game or it's an anime or is it it's a comics fucking lucked out because they started fucking stu they did like the reverse where comics started fucking stupid. Yeah. And then the movies managed to turn that one around. I never thought I'd be catching feels in an Infinity War movie, you know? Yeah, it's weird. Well, because I mean, but. like, they they did something that is, like, really smart. They, they didn't adapt, like, fully. They created their own universe. Yeah. And Which is in true story. comic spirit. People keep making new love universes. following a story. Yeah. They love being a part of something. That's why that's why these these Fast and Furious and all the Marvel movies they're just they do so well because they love being a part of a fandom. People love it. They love that shit, but like they don't want to commit. If the only commitment you need to do is go to watch a movie, they're down. Yeah. They're about it. But like go look up these 50 pages of lore in 250 episode series with the video games that also have canon in them. But see, I don't even think you need to do that. Like, 
Like, Death Note was a pretty good example of this, where even still, like, coming away from it, that's probably the best adaptation of, like, that type that I've seen. Where it changes enough to still be, like, its own thing while kind of keeping, like, some stuff from the original. But, like, you could have just done the story of Death Note. Yeah. That's why people love it. Yeah. You could change some names, move some stuff around, but at the end of the day, the story still works. Yeah. But instead, it's like, uh, I don't know. So. I will never watch Ghost in the Shell, the live action one. Yeah, I'll, no, I'll I've, never, I've, I'll never fucking watch it. I've hard cut that out of my life. Guess I what? Guess Art design looked really good. Those geisha robots are fucking sick. They're super cool with their faces, like, open up. I don't care, though. Just watch Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon's better. This goes, yeah. And it's and it's reason for whitewashing is, like, can, like canonically a thing. Yeah. It's good. We should watch it. That's the thing. It's like, all right, fine. I'll watch Art Altered Carbon, and you can watch literally any of the things I've told you to watch. <laughs> We're going to catch you up on Megalobox after this. I don't know what the fuck you think you're doing. Yo, you can hit up that Fratello's, boy. It's time for some pizza tonight. I am also ready to hit up for Tellus. <laughs> Fuck, how long have we been going? Uh. We got a little bit more time. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about the other thing. Um, what, I wanted to bring it up only because like it was an interesting topic and I don't but at the same time I feel like we I don't have a whole lot more to add other than like yeah okay to the conversation yeah mean, well shoot I'll make something up yeah all right fuck <laughs> it like uh so Kotaku uh, recently just came out with an article talking about how and it's it's sort of shared in the, in the vein of like two people having a conversation mm -hmm. I don't know why they do this they do this all the time and it's talking about what stops women from going pro in esports and a good majority of the conversation is about how there there's never this like where it's considered a, like, really what it comes down to is, like, women shouldn't be considered better or worse. No. They should be considered. Yes. That's it. Everyone is on the same playing field. Yes. That, and, is, and that is the future. Because I think they were talking about, like, the Tekken player, where, I, I forget her name, but, you know, she was saying. The Alyssa oh, player? I think so. I don't know. Like, is, there, is this the TV story? Do you not know about this? Were you not no, around? No. We were talking about it at the local? No. Um, no. There was a, a, a guy who played a girl in Tekken. He basically got fucking whopped because she's super cool. I can't remember her name, but she plays Alyssa. And, like, the whole way through, it's just <clears throat> pissed and making excuses. Oh, at no, one no, point, I... he changes the fucking resolution yeah, no, on the TV. We, we were there. We were yeah. talking about that. Well, for but... them, he changes the resolution on the TV from 1080p to 720p. Like, that was the reason he was losing and then proceeds to once again get fucking stopped. And it's like, dude, she's the better player. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's looking at you like you're a huge bitch. But, like, what, the, what she was trying to say was... Um, she was talking about how like people would refer to this player as like, wow, she must be really good to get this far, like because it's like downplaying her, like the idea of like you're sitting there going, oh, because she's a girl, she has to be way better than other girls. It's like, well, maybe, you know, and a, a good point. Like I said earlier, my yeah, friend Sharon, I... not super good at video games, but that's not because she's a girl. It's because she's, she doesn't fucking she's, she's, she yeah. spends her days on Stardew Valley and is like, yo, this is my shit. Yeah. And I know people who do the same thing, and they're they're men. They're dudes, man. And they're just as bad at fucking every other f game they play. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like that type of person. And, and at the same time, it's like, but we don't, you and I don't have that hurdle of like, I now have to prove myself way harder because I have a vagina in between my legs. You're right. I don't have that hurdle, though. No. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but like. See? No reaction. That's the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought it was an interesting conversation, and, and I just, I understood what they were saying. At the same time, I kind of feel like what needs to happen is there are a lot, like, there are a lot of girls who are trying to get into it. I think they need to do it. I think they just, yeah. need to, they, they need to do it. Like, you can't, like, not for nothing, do it. Like, there's no other reason... Like, I understand that you're going to be met with that resistance. Mm -hmm. Re nothing can change unless you fucking shake up the qu status quo. Yeah. And, and, and here's, here's, here's how I feel about it. It's really tough because, like, that works great for fighting games. You just sign a form, hand some money in, and you're in the tournament. When you're 
like, say you're a female player, you want to play Overwatch competitively. You're good enough to make it. You still have to deal with all the fucking politics of having, you know, teams that are based in, like, states and countries. There's only a limited amount. There, there's no open brackets of any kind. And then you also have to deal with the fact where it's like, if you're not Korean, like, 50% taken off your resume, you're done. Well, not only that, like, but, like, get, I think... Gegudi, I think her name is that that Overwatch player I was telling you about a yeah. while ago. The, yeah, the Zarya, who was so good that they had accused her of hacking. Yeah, because of, I think it was a replay that they had saw. They were like, "Oh, what the fuck?" And um, they said that she's she. They're not going to hire her on because they're not sure how the other team would react to a girl living in the, the space. They hit him with that Final Fantasy fifteen logic, where it's like, "I get what you're saying. That's still shitty to do." Like, I understand your point of view. And get her a one bedroom then. There's yeah, enough money like, in the fucking league. And then There's and, workarounds. And that and that's what I'm saying. And that's kinda where where I'm at. It's like if you're if you're good enough to make it, I don't care what gender you are, I don't care what race you are, I don't care what you fucking worship. If you're good enough to make it, you should have the chance to make it. No one should be handed anything. Yeah. And I don't think I don't like the direction where it's like, we're girls, and we're here, and we're an all-girl team, and we're going to show them. It's like, just be good. Just play the game, be good. Do it the same way everybody else is doing it. Nobody comes out, and they're waving their dick around, and it's like, yo, I'm a man, I have a penis, I'm going to cut that dude's hair. <laughs> this is terrible. Nobody clip that. <laughs> um, <laughs> nobody listens this far anyway. Um, but... There's, there. I think there's a problem with dudes, 100%. They're d d stupid idiots who are afraid that girls are going to come in and take over their hobby. And that's dumb. It's super dumb. In the Why is a straight male are you afraid of women being a part of your fucking hobby? Because that's your escape. And I hate that, and I hate that that's a fucking reason I have to use. Yeah. Where it's like... Oh, you can you can you can relate to women, but like that's a that's a factor you should kind of think about. Yeah, I have an opportunity to exist on this realm with another human being for half a second. Doesn't even need to be like a I'm gonna fuck her. Like it's just like a hey, I can have more friends that do the thing I like. Yeah, I can go to events that people. That's I, why it's like I so can cool. diversify my friend portfolio. Yeah, that's why it's so cool. Like to to like Kingdom Hearts as a franchise. Is so universally like loved because it's yeah. like everybody who, who you talk to is like girls, boys, moms, dads, kids. My mom loves can, Kingdom Hearts. You can have everybody in like it's cool to be a part of something. Like I said earlier, yeah. everyone wants to be a part of something. Everyone, yeah, let them do it. But why, as a, as a male, do you sit there and go, I can't. These girls are just gonna, I'm you gonna know ruin why. everything. You know the people and, and why they would do that. <sighs> And, you know, there are two reasons why, and they're both terrible, and everyone knows what they are, so it's... But, like, that's it. But, see, I, I'm very, like... It's like, no, I don't think you should be given special treatment because you're a girl. I don't think you should be given worse treatment because you're a girl. If you're good, you should be able to go as far as your skill will take you. If you're that's not... That's where I'm at. If you suck, if then you suck. I don't care what you have. But if you're willing to learn, and you're willing to yeah. come to majors, fuck commentate. Become per the next Persia. Yeah. Do the fucking... Why do, not? Do your thing. Like, fucking be a part of this. But under but I think the problem with the FGC is the FGC is scrappy as fuck already. Yeah. The FGC is not esports. It's not very welcoming for dudes. It's not very welcoming at all. But no. that's what's kind of fun about it. Yeah. You gotta be hard. <laughs> you gotta You gotta be hard, boy. Yeah. It's getting better. It depends what games you play. God bless you if you play Smash. God bless you. Hey, I would hate to deal with that community. Time to start talking about what I was laughing at. <laughs> I really hate Smash how good players, I am at segues. Smash players plead with each other to please, for the love of God, stop smelling so bad. <laughs> so I would just like to say, as now Supreme God King of FGC in Orlando, um, the... Uh, the venue that we're, we're negotiating with, well, I guess we're done with negotiations, we're just doing it. Yeah. Uh, they propose that we go bi-weekly. One week we do regular fighting games, the other week we would do games like Smash and more casual stuff. And I was like, listen, there are more than enough Smash events, and there is not a lot of carryover. 
between regular fighting game players and Smash players. There's a little, there's not a lot, and trust me, that's not an event you want to host in an establishment where one, food is served, <laughs> where two, you're trying to sell alcohol, and three, just, God, God so tell me about the smelly, you don't have to tell me, I've been to more than enough events to know, it's just, oh my God, CEO. CEO two years ago. There is a I, when I Smash walked... gets its own room. And, Boy, does it! And you say, "Oh, that's because there's a lot of Smash players." Yes, there's something about being surrounded by 50 CRTs. They're all radiating heat. Um, that just fucking. I don't know. I, I think it's just because the 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 FGC has been around long enough where we we've kind of passed through that phase. You'll still find the gnarly dude every now and then, but like everybody hates them and they get called out for it immediately. And then you know next time they they show up with some L'Oreal. But oh, Phil is just discovering my my Vix infused uh, tissues. Um. Smash, still as a competitive game, even though, like, Melee came out in 2001, is still in its infancy. And, like, that's still no excuse for not showering. I'm not trying to pass it off as that. Just take a shower. You can get travel soaps cheap. Look, I'm going to be real with everybody here. I don't shower. I don't shower. <laughs> <laughs> no. I play I Smash. I... <laughs> <laughs> I shower every day. Right? <laughs> That's awesome, dude. That's great. But like, here's the thing. I, you know, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna say some shit. I'm gonna be real personal. TMI had a thing on my thigh that just, you know, when you're fat, it just rubs. It just rubs, and sometimes it gets a little irritated. And sometimes you grow something that's not great, and it hurts like a motherfucker. Fair enough, guy. Okay. Uh. And I shower daily. There are motherfuckers who are overweight with them chapped ass thighs, sweating their balls off with the CRTs, rubbing. Just rubbing. Just rubbing, rubbing their hands, sitting in gyrating. That stink. They sit on the floor. What kind of like infestation is on that person's body? <laughs> What? What is? What is that? Who does that person become when they take off their pants and have to deal with themselves? You'll have to wait for the Last of Us Two trailer at E3 <laughs> to find out. Like what the fuck? Like who? You have to know. I I I've had that thing where it's like, what's what? keeping women out of esports? Smash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dude and I don't even want to be around it. Yeah, I'd probably compete in more online tournaments if they didn't have to deal with net play. Oh my fucking god. No, I just want to be real. Anyone out there who plays Smash who's listening or watching, um, 100% take it personally. Take a shower. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done apologizing. Uh, look, I have I've no met cool people who play Smash, but if you know what a wave dash is... Odds are we're going to run into some trouble eventually. I don't think I've ever met a Smash player who isn't a fucking weirdo. I, I just don't, I don't know it. Like it. Yeah, especially that cheat guy. What a weirdo. Oh, fuck. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy. No. Uh, I just, oh, oh, that's God. two podcasts in a row. <laughs> cheat on Black. <laughs> um, blow, blow no, his cheat's great. Out. He's one of the good ones. Smash <laughs> Oh man, a line of jokes just a new path unlocked. <laughs> but that line of jokes gets bad fast. God it's like, did you hear when Smash players move into the neighborhood like property value goes down? <laughs> did you hear Cloud not Cloud9 just got a team house down the street? Oh, we need to sell. We need to sell right now. Sell right now. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're at the end of another podcast, and we most certainly enjoy your presence. We know who you are. 
We enjoy everything you've done for us. We hope that you continue to aid us in our journey of non-content content creation on some level. Max, tell me what you are wanting to do on your stream. Um, I want to be doing more uh, more cross-tag battle while the demo's out. We'll be doing just more versus mode stuff. Yes. Haven't had anybody come over yet. I'm, I'm still looking into doing that. But for sure, we'll be doing more offline CPU battles, taking team requests. Uh, apparently, people really fucking like watching that because I, I blew up the other day. So yeah, we'll, we'll, de that. we'll definitely keep doing that because um, I'm in it for the money. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but other than that, I promise Yakuza 6 will resume at some point. I just haven't had the energy and, uh, oh yeah, don't worry about that. That's just the, the fuck was that? It's the sound, you know, the, the, the fuck was that? It's the house sound. The sound that happens in the house. Oh, what the fuck is sound? That's fine. Okay. I don't think they can hear it. It's like, it's like a whistle. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like in my head, almost. Huh. Spooky. Yeah. Uh. You want some, you want to get some pizza? We should get some pizza. Oh, and also we may be continuing another turn-based RPG because I found a very efficient way of grinding. Oh, uh, okay. It's Nep Nep. Yeah, it's Nep Nep. It's Nepify your life. Nepify your life. All I right. can't afford that bundle. It kills so me. So, it looks like my... My uh, Twitter poll is coming to an end. All right. Live announcement on stream or pre-recorded announcement on YouTube. Yeah. So I asked people. I was really into JRPGs. I want to start a JRPG on stream. Uh, I had four options. I had Ye7, Odin Sphere, Tales of Berseria, and Continue Trails of Steel. Yeah. Uh, Ye's lost hard. Weird, considering a lot of people like that game. 3%. It's a stacked list. Yeah, three three percent. Odin Sphere, twenty one percent. Good. Fair. Uh, neck and neck for a long time until yeah. just now was Tales of Berseria and Trails of Steel. People fucking love that Tales game. Like I was, I played a little bit of it. I enjoyed my time with it. Apparently, yeah. that game gets way fucking better. Uh, and it's winning. And I think it's won. So I think nice. We're gonna play and, Tales of Berseria. And I think the stream. reason why East is that low is just because one i don't is that the brand new one yeah that just came out yeah i don't know how well received that one is but like because oh the working. localization is terrible oh. apparently and they fixed it they fixed a lot of it but like yeah, they, well that's fun apparently the gameplay is fucking phenomenal um but trails and east it's they're both falcom right so it's kind of a team kill yeah and i i again uh, people i forget somebody bought me trails of cold steel i'll play it at some point, I promise, I have to do Trails in the Sky first. Because somebody else bought me Trails in the Sky. I showed up both. They're yeah, both I have... Great. Yeah. They're both really good. Um, again, my, my, my theme song comes from Trails in the Sky. I have to play it. That is this, the song. best battle theme ever. So good. Um, Alright, so it, it sounds like Tails... Adventure yeah. is going to be the game you're playing from the for the Game Gear. That's cool. Yeah, for the Game Gear. Yeah, I'm super done. Tail Sky it. Patrol. Hope to see you all there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Watching from the shadows quietly. You know what, guys? We're hungry. We're gonna watch anime, eat pizza, <laughs> kill ourselves probably. You all have a good night. Take a nap. Take a nap. I'm gonna play the video again. You can play the video. Oh, yeah, yeah everybody like fucking missed it. And guess what? Guy watching this on the YouTube who always comments on every video, I know who you are. Uh, you're going to watch it again because I don't know if you rewound it. So thank you all for watching. Um, follow Phil at twitch.t. Well, this Twitch. All of our links are in the description on YouTube. And if you're watching this on Twitch, you know where it's at. Yeah. But at Philsher or PhilsherMang um, yeah. on Twitter. And I'm at MAXX on everything. Uh, that's it for us. You are you already said nap, so I guess that's it. Play that shit. <laughs>